everybody. Um, welcome to a snowy afternoon in my garden and a little bit about this talk. I, I've tried to put in some tips that I think are safe and, and also good practice when, like myself, I've had a knee replacement in August, so I've been told by the doctor I'm not allowed to kneel on it. So luckily, I've been dealing with some of these issues not luckily. Anyway, I've been dealing with some of these issues over the last two years. So there's things in, in my garden and things that I've taken to noticing in other gardens. So I'm I'm hoping that this will give you some valid tips. As we go along, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll endeavor to answer them. And we'll see how it all goes. Anyway, I wanted to say thank you for coming out and I will share my screen with you all and we will go from there. Hopefully I will get it right. <laughs> so I wanted to say, and I said it earlier, is that some of these methodologies and things that staying safe in the garden are about is because I have been experiencing a bad knee and now I have a new knee and I've had a few other, well, my husband was disabled. So I've paid attention over the years to what he needed and what his, and he wanted to garden in the worst possible way. So there's lots of ways. And, and honestly, the way I look at this is that we're, you know, gardening smart rather than relying on our bending and our muscle. Although every once in a while, there is a chore that you do require muscle for. So like I was saying, there's so many things that we have to lift and we have to move around bags of compost and you push around a wheelbarrow. And those are all, then there's all the watering cans. Oh my goodness, a watering can weighs a lot. I haven't weighed one lately, but I happen to know that my great big one is heavy. The dog seems to be able to play with it full, but lifting it is quite something. But, you know, honestly, we have to get fit for gardening and it's coming up. So we, we should be working on that. Maybe we could be doing that instead of, a, you know, doing some weights or some training. Anyway, let's go gardening and let's see what we can do. This particular garden was designed for a mad keen gardener. And he ended up in a wheelchair. And so we, the guys at Countryside spent some time and worked with him and measured how high and how far he could reach. And these beds were created in that plan. And the fact that his wheelchair would go over the paving. So it made for quite a nice setup for him. I understand he's converted from flowers to two beds of vegetables. So that's quite exciting. Now. I have a friend who, oh, I don't know, a while back had a great deal of um, mishaps and ended up in a wheelchair. And But she still wanted to garden and she still wanted to work in it. And she went from her narrow little pathways into big, wide open spaces. And she she got a golf cart. Now, not all of us can afford a golf cart. It even has an attached wagon, but she can go around and haul things. And some of her issues, as she says, are just the fact that she's lost a bit of gardening space, but she's able to keep on gardening. And her husband put somewhat wider tires on the golf cart because she kept tipping it over. So when we handle some of this, we 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 look at it and we have to shake our head or go, well, we'll get on. So some wheels that I know not all of us can afford a golf cart, but one of the ones that I discovered was this tractor scooter. And I think it's really neat. You can get it at Lee Valley Tools and it has a way to it. put a basket on it and get a seat and that seat swivels around. And the other thing it does is it has an anchor. So if you're gonna sit in a place and weed or pick or something, it will, literally be you can attach not attach it you put the the anchor down and it stays in place and I really like the little tray underneath so it's something that you know you could look at and also if you want you could get one of those 
well, if you have a riding lawnmower, there's some amazing things that attach to it now. And you can do some serious carting of things around. It's it's just one of these days, but ride one of these things, but riding lawnmowers are so cool. And this is the cart she began with. And she's she still her husband still uses it. And you'll note that the watering can's in there because toting it around is heavy. Those are things that I look at when I'm planning how I'm going to attack each garden season. And I do any of you own a, a, a kneeler, a garden kneeler? They are one of the coolest things. You can get down on the pad and you've got lifting assists on either side. And Lee Valley has put this new pouch on the side of it. So you can tote things like your seed packets and put your jewels in it. I like it from putting it the other way up. And mine, I sit on it and it it does a really, really good job of keeping me upright. And it's one of the tests that I always tell myself and one of the physios over the years has told me is, can you reach down and still tie your shoes? Then you may be able to keep on this using the garden kneeler. And I think you can anyway. I've done pretty well. Um, I won't be using the kneeling position for another six months at least, but we will see. And they're easy to move around because you just pick them up and they're light and you can move them around. And you will have to keep your garden rows a little wider if you're vegetable gardening. And here's a good use for an old sink. Here's a potting bench right in the garden and it's built from recycled wood and it's got a sink and it's got all this stuff that you can do. But what is great is you can sit in a chair and still use it because it's at just the right height and you're not reaching up and you're reaching at a level. And and I think this this is quite quite a good device. I'm uh, honestly I I want I want a bench on wheels and I haven't find, found one yet that really works to my plan. So I still am looking around a little bit, but I kind of am looking at this this one and going, well, that's kind of neat. But to put it even in, in better language, I have a perfectly good potting bench in the garage, but it's not on wheels. So I use it, but I basically stand at it because that's the height it's at. But if I could move it, and move it around a bit, I find I might get more use out of it. And I just discovered these, they go over your so over your um, tap, your outside tap, and you can turn it into a table, you can make it into a sink, you can attach your hose and there's little shelves on it. And at the bottom, there's even a little shelf. Now, I think that's handy enough you could put it and it only sticks out about 18 inches from the wall where you've attached your hose bib so it would be one that I would think is really quite a handy gadget to have now I built a new deck two years ago and one of the things as I said to you I have potting potting issues I I want a potting bench so with my rampant and the new deck I put in I had the builder build me a potting bench or a seat I have cushions that go on it if people want to sit in it I have a bin at the end that for all intents and practical purpose I do put my soil bag in there and work from there but in the summer it this particular little raised bin holds two pepper plants and I'm quite proud of my peppers. They've produced last, they st I still have peppers in my cupboard, the hot peppers, cause I grew a hot pepper and a sweet pepper and they both produce like mad in the sunlight here. So, and my deck has a wheelchair ramp because my husband was in a wheelchair. So I left it in just because I do find it easier to wheel my, my wagon up when I'm gardening and doing stuff like that. And I, all along the one side of this ramp, I grow tomatoes in bags. So it, it has many purposes in my thought process. And the other thing I have discovered since I'm not bending over and I can't, or not bending, but I can't kneel or do whatever, I moved a lot of my potted herbs 
up onto the deck and I had the builder fellow put in a shelf for me. And that shelf holds up to a five inch size pot, which when the herbs are fully developed, it just looks great and they're neat. And these louvers are on this deck because you can open them up and get air circulation. And when it's a bit cold, you just shut the louvers and it makes for great heat and it helps the herbs to develop because it reflects the warmth. Now, here's another project that I got involved in and it's, you know, using your spaces and I like to optimize the space that I can use and some of the people that I've worked with. And this particular person has difficulty picking and using her ground. So she, she grows lettuces and she's really fanatical about salad gardening. And so we went and we got some shoe bags and we put wooden frames on them on the chain link fence and they've worked really, really well. And I showed this to my buddy in Edmonton in the using her golf cart and she did did me one better instead of just doing one or two rows she filled her whole fence on one side and she can wheel right up to it and pick lettuces um, she's graduated a little bit she's growing kale in them now and she's growing spinach and all sorts of things so it's all in what you want to do but I mean it'll work even for if you're in a wheelchair or if you need to sit this particular uh, piece is three feet high and you could raise them a little higher off the ground so they'd have a little bit more but what I like about them too is they have air circulation so it makes quite a difference and these are gutters these are storm gutters off of your you know your downspout etc and they are newer ones and I've discovered more and more that the four inch deep ones look really really much better and they allow things like radishes to ripen better and quicker um, and I saw in a garden somewhere with the gutters someone was growing beets in theirs and it turned out beautifully so these are things that if you have accessibility issues or you can't bend over it's something that you can, you know, think about. Use your up space. Use your up space. And here's another, this is a, an above ground, or if you will, a bit of a raised planter in that this is a rock garden. Rock gardens are really handy. You can get up on top of them. You can work into them. And this garden has a screen around it, but it has a bench and it's got a walking space around it so you can work all the sides of it without having to climb over it. Now, there's the long handle tools and really they're great. They can do, you can get a hold to hold on and you can use it anywhere, anytime. And <laughs> This is sort of an idea I saw a hundred years ago and it's been rolling around in my pictures that I've had over the years. And that's a golf bag. And then the tools are stuffed into it. And I notice now on a lot of the blogs and things I read, people are using their wheeled golf bag to haul their tools around in the garden. No, nothing wrong with that. But one of the things that I really encourage people to do is to hoe their garden and to use it, you know, to use that. And I find that some of the long handled tools are very, very hard to use. And some are um, really quite easy. One of my personal favorites, and I've hauled it around forever, it's the red tool on the side. And it's a stirrup hole, great for hoeing. But what I really like is this one. If you want it a bit longer, if you can't reach completely, across the bed it extends so I can use it quite easily around in in certain places but those are the things that I kind of look for and I'm always trying to find hose in particular because I'm forever fighting that battle 
And that that is quite a, a battle sometimes. Now, long handle tools versus short handle tools. They they really do have their battles. Um <laughs> My my friend Glenn is a gardener and he has all these tools that he uses and that's his idea of winter storage for his garden tools. But he too tells me that the things he uses most are his hoe and he has a little short leaf rake and he says it's easiest on his back because he's getting to that stage. But these little short handled leaf, leaf rakes, great. And the ones that are plastic, even though they break, they just keep on trucking and doing a very good job. And here is a small pitchfork and it's literally only about 20 inches long. And there's the small trowel that goes with it and it's about 20 inches long. And you don't have to use as much as you much torque in it as you think. And for raised beds, I much prefer the short shorter handles because that way you're not you know trying to use a long handled thing and ending up clipping an ear or getting yourself you know and it's still you're still able to do a bit of gardening while standing because this bed's only 12 inches above the ground so it will take and you can use most of these tools on that adaption and then there's watering now, I don't know about you, but the hoses get heavier and heavier and heavier. And I had to take this picture. This was um, at one of the greenhouses and somebody must have either got really preoccupied or really doing other things. And that's their idea of putting away a hose. I particularly like the knot that's tied in it. And for someone like if they have limited mobility or find it hard to uh, bend over, something like that would be absolutely, if not impossible, but close to impossible and would probably take them half a day to untangle it. So I look for the newer lightweight hoses. I noticed that I was in uh, Rona the other day and they had their new hoses and things in and they had a really nice lightweight hose that lifted beautifully and didn't seem to be too heavy. And Lee Valley Tools has quite a, quite a collection of newer lightweight hoses. Oh, Deb, you have your hand up. Yes, we have a, a question. All right. For the, the shoe bags with the lettuce and stuff like that. Yes. What is it made from and where was that purchased from? Like, what was the source? They are cotton polyester and they're from Yisk. J-Y-S-K, and they were really cheap, <laughs> but I haven't, those are about nine to 10 years old, those bags, and we haven't had to replace them. They're really good, and I have some in my, in my collection, and I use them for planting herbs, so it, it's just a question of what, where you look for them, but yes, because the best bet, I found that the shoe bags at Walmart weren't strong enough and didn't have a double seam, whereas the Yisk ones had a double seam on them. I don't know if, you know, if you're going to put that many shoes in a shoe bag, it needs double stitching. So the Yisk one had a double stitch. Can you tell I do a bit of shopping around? <laughs> anyway, um, and watering of course with watering cans it can be a very heavy job this one in particular is about a five liter watering can and it is really heavy and filled with water it's heavy but there are all sorts of watering tricks which i will go into as i go along um it's just a question of can you water that'll be the trick and try to keep your watering low try to keep it slow and gradually water. And another really, really great water saving thing that I like, or one of the things that I like about spacing and putting things in spaces is container gardening. And if you really and truly have trouble, you either could choose, if you have trouble getting up and down raised beds or containers. And really and truly the color you can get from them. Raised beds, this one is great. This is 
a longtime member of the Horticultural Society, and she used to open her garden and show it off. And hers was really good. She had the 18, 19, 20 inch tall beds and she had the most production of vegetables and flowers and she corralled it with raspberries and she just kept it going. Deb, you have your hand up again. Yes, we have another question. All right. So when you, when you would that cover with the hose reel, the hose holder, that bib, kind of the garden table that fit over your 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 faucet, where was that from? That I found at Home Depot. So I I was quite I was quite excited to see it because I'd of course seen pictures, but it's it's at Home Depot and I looked it up. It's cheaper at Home Depot than at Amazon. So do go and look for it. It's it's a goodie. Okay, so raised beds, and Carol always did things like she planted companion plants, like her marigolds for insect traps, and she had dianthus in there to attract the pollinators. And what I really, she could fight almost any pest, and she could attract everything. But you see this cage around the middle part? That's to keep her dogs from going in and eating the kale and, and the... Uh, lettuces and if she has if she grew um turnips she had to put that cage over them as well but these are some of the tricks that she did and she did a great job and you'll notice that she has fancy corners on each of her beds and she did that because what she was trying to do was keep she was using a hose to water and she was finding that the hose was kinking and getting around the edge and not turning so Get some, get some looking into that. The raised beds really and truly are one of my favorite answers to some of this. And then ground level plantings. Oh. Ground level plantings are something that I like to do. And if you have just a certain amount of limited mobility, just raise them up six or eight inches and sit the toil on soil on the top and using your long handled tools and or your your uh, kneeling bench you can do quite a bit of weeding and deadheading at an uh, at off the kneeler etc cuz it'll give it just the right height and you will see that that's this garden has got wood framing around it and the soil's been raised about 6 to 8 inches and it makes a big difference but isn't that pretty doesn't that you make you long for planting season soon i was when i was doing this it was really snowy so it's a beauty knee wall beds is another way to garden if you are in a wheelchair or you have need the requirement to sit and i particularly like these i thought they were really well done and thought out these are for the the cerebral palsy place and and they did a beautiful job they grow mainly vegetables but if i were to have gone around the other side and taken the picture which i should have but i this was a nicer view in my mind but the flowers they were growing in the other beds and they put hanging things and and it looked really really nice it it it's one of those choices that you make but just think putting that around the edge of your house with those sort of access you'd be really having quite a nice planting space. And then waist high, high beds. Now this is the Southwood Community Garden and they have the lower community garden type beds, but they have some raised ones so that that are a little higher so you can stand right upright and work in them. And it has just a nice enough access. And just to keep the accessibility, they put some benches in sit and sitting so people, if they wanted to, they could sit down while they were doing their work. And I really liked, I wish I'd gone back, but I really liked the uh, lattice raised up and they've got nasturtiums climbing up it. And it's a great accent in that garden. Actually, Southwood's one of the community gardens that you really should try to visit from some of the ways that they work with their community and try to do some really interesting gardening techniques. Now, this, the first time I ever saw, saw 
a salad table. We were in California and I was quite excited about it. And those pieces, those salad props are growing actually in the table. And <laughs> I was, we went to sit down and taste wine and have salad and dinner. And all I could think about and all I kept turning to my friend and saying was, my mom really needs one of these. So we kind of made her one where she could sit at her stool and have that. But it's much easier to garden from there. And when they serve that, that salad bowl that's sitting there, there's a pair of scissors there. And you just scissor off or pick what you want to put in. And I asked the fellows there what how often they replaced the greens and replanted them. And they said that they probably, if they had a busy weekend, they had to have some ready to go back in. But these little trays that are sitting on top are five inches tall. So what a neat idea. To me, that's that's a fun thing to do. Now let's talk containers. Really, I try to give people the advice that suit your container to where you're used to gardening suit your containers to your style it's it's just a question of how how much you want to do and work with it i i love these choices of plantings and i like the fact that they were raised up on old chairs and old tables and everything so that they could garden in them and they had a little seated gazebo right there to work right in it and they used plastic pots to move some of them around easier. The basket was easy to lift and move around. The only one on the chair, as she, the homeowner told me at that open garden, she said, it's kind of a permanent fixture because I can't move it. Once it's in place, that's it. So she, she keeps it there, but she has a little bowl there and it's got flowers, but she's got salads and growing around it. Just useful double potting, but some nice mixing. And you'll notice that her beds are raised by bricks so that she can work along the top side of her bed. Now, try larger containers in one great big container. They can be really, really fun and look really good. And honestly, there's so many things that you can do and yeah, it's big. That planter is 60 inches across and it's got all the favorite flowers of the homeowner. And the other thing is that underneath it, it has wheels. And I was going to bring one of the dollies in from the garage, but apparently I forgot it. But you go into the garden centers or Ikea and you will find these saucers, but they have wheels on the bottom. Now, my recommendation is to buy the metal ones, not the plastic ones, they fall apart rapidly. And the, the wheels should be metal, not plastic. They stay solid and they last a long time. And the ones that I have in my garage are easily 10 years old. But moving things around and, and being able to use it on that basis. And something like this very large guy, he's not going anywhere really you don't want to move them around but you can also opt to do lightweight containers and move them around and change them you know just sort of like you rearrange the furniture in the house you could well I do I my husband nearly died one night because he came home late from work and I'd moved the couch and he fell over the back of it so I had to always give him fair warning I was moving things so it is one of those things but Think about what you're going to do with it, because if you're going to bring some of these containers in, they have a fair bit of weight to them. These are Italian clay, and they easily weighed 100 pounds just alone before they were planted. And then these are some of those uh, ceramics that you see, the Mexican ceramics and some of the European ones. And they're not that much heavier, but if I were going to do anything, I'd use the bigger, taller ones, put a saucer under it, and then I can move it around and play with it. But do look around because they're coming out with more and more lightweight fiberglass pots that are easy to move around and hold up to the weather just fine. And wooden pots. If you want a vegetable garden raised up that's not a lot of money and you don't want a huge one, you just want a reasonable size, you will find that the wooden ones are a reasonable price. And these particular ones are, were, and still are sold 
in Greengate and they're Alberta made up north and the price is really reasonable and they have everything from the long window boxes to the great big square ones and some bigger taller rectangles so there's another way to raise up your garden and work in it oh I talked of this but do look at your choices for colors and how you can move them around I am always fascinated by people who do get to grow their vegetables. This was another open garden. And in these, they have peppers and they have tomatoes and they've planted trap plants around them. And these are lightweight uh, fiberglass pots that I was talking about. And they move around and you could, as the sunlight shifts and starts to change, you could pull them out further into the sun fairly readily and they would work really well. I um, often recommend to people to, to if they have that the one-sided location, like up against this tree, rotate them around too, because then they'll get equal sunlight on both sides. So you will have to look at that a little bit when you're planning. Now, the other thing is creating and growing vegetables and getting vegetables that don't want to, that won't take over and outgrow your pot. I don't know how many of you like zucchini, but this particular little guy is called Astia. And it's only from Renee's garden in the seed, grows really readily. The um, zucchini that I got out of it was about five and six inches long. It was really tasty. So now instead of I was only growing one pot, and now I put out four or five and I put them out in the front, blending them in with my flowers. And they have such a nice, interesting leaf that it causes quite a bit of um, interesting conversations because people walk over. I've had someone walk up on my sidewalk one day and lift the leaves to see what it was. <laughs> and he spotted the zucchini. And so I stuck my head out and he says, is that zucchini? I said, yes, but it's the miniature. He says, oh, good. I wouldn't have to deal with those great big guys. Anyway, looking around, look for littler containers, smaller containers, lightweight containers, because if you want to grow um, vegetables and you don't have the huge square footage and you don't want to go around trying to locate it in, try looking for some of the newer, smaller ve vegetables. I I, I'm a big fan of trying to deal with the containers and trying to get them to work in the various parts of the garden. We're missing. And when I'm planning and doing containers, yes, I want to put on a display. And I love this. I saw it at one of the open gardens a number of years ago now. And I thought this was just great use of these old, old watering cans and some of them, well, they were antiques. I talked to the lady and she liked to use them up her stairs and she changed them from geraniums to whatever some years. But she said what she liked about them particularly is they were light metal. And so she wasn't shifting the whole weight of the soil and the metal pots. So it, it's a question on how you put it together. It's it's just looking for the location and she has them close to her front door so that she can water everything quite close to her water source. And she said, I don't have to haul the great big watering can out. I can use the the little the little or lightweight plastic. And these hostas, those pots are the metal pots, and they are incredibly lightweight. And I, yes, putting hostas in a pot is a good idea, but in the shade, can you can see them then and they give you more color. And those are all the taller ones, so it, it's easy to manage. Oh, and by the way, this lady with the geraniums on her porch, she had the biggest fuchsia I have ever, ever encountered in someone's garden. It literally was in a 20-inch plastic pot, but the thing was five feet across and dangling down. And as she said, she doesn't use the other side of the porch once it really started to grow. But it, as she also did, she started it in a ceramic pot and the following year moved it into a plastic pot so that it could move around easier. But really it's amazing when you tour the open gardens and some of the ideas that you meet and see, and some of the gardeners, I, I some of our open garden members 
are not spring chickens anymore and what they produce and they all tell the same story it's all in the tricks it's all in what you can do and follow along with and that's what makes the difference so you know chatting among our members like we are want to do and i'm always grateful when someone shows up to one of these talks so i get some feedback and i get to hear what you do so be careful at the end i have a quiz And then window boxes are very, very um, handy to have and great to be able to put outside a window if you own the type of home that would suit them. But in this garden, they used, a, they created window ledges and they put a collection of small pots in it. And it was a very sunny spot. So the osteos did really well. But what stymied me was, yeah, the osteos were doing really well, but they had begonias, fibrous begonias growing in it. Made me question. And then I asked them how long it takes them to, to water all these little containers. And uh, the homeowner spoke up and said to me, well, I'm doing most of it and I have two walking sticks. So I wanted ledges to hold on to so I could move from window to window watering. And each of those planters is chosen and for how much water I can put into them on each one. So he said each of those ledges holds one watering can plants. So he doesn't have to haul all the watering cans out. Now, how big is your garden space? Not everybody has a dead tree in their yard that they can turn into a great figure. I thought this was just so fun. Those are, that's a bicycle that fell apart. And then, but the succulents up on top there, and they've, all they've done is taken an old, you know, those wreaths that you buy with the twig wreaths, and they've just created a small container in it. And he said, they said to me, it just made a nice whimsical container without having to put in a giant in there and they like the textures and doesn't he look like an octopus a little bit with those roots I, I think that's fun and then of course you can also go smaller these are little uh, ceramic jeans they're probably doll while well, they were dollarama and just put a couple of succulents in and it, it just picks up the highlight of the day and this this is part and parcel of why we garden right for the conversations that it generates, for the thought processes that we put into it. And I feel that all, all of us are very creative when it comes to our gardens. And I, I just have to tour around a little bit and I watch people and I think they've got it right. And then when I say how big is your space, I'm questioning that because some people only garden on a patio, but They've got solid foundation. They've got some nice containers going on, some really good uh, color, and they're using the, the colors of the pots to tie in. And the other thing that I thought was great in this particular condo was that they had put in an arbor and planted clematis coming up both sides. It's just the size of the, you know, of the area. And you don't have to overplant it, but it certainly makes quite a nice statement with it and it some of these plants would just be lost on a big deck so it's a, a fun way to create an intimate space and that brings me to gardening on the up spaces using your space using the up space this is in a front garden and the arbor was put in to create a walking space to go to the garage and they were using pots and they had their clematis for privacy, but using that and it actually doesn't require a lot of care and the deadheading can be done by sitting in the chair and getting after it and using your spaces, but go up. You'll be surprised what you can use up. I mean, this particular garden over in um, Acadia, 
they they did this. They took down a great big poplar tree, and I watched them take down the poplar tree when I was walking by. And the following year after that, they had started to mound and put in fresh soil and raise the garden up. But on the side under the garage, they had raised it all up, and they were growing tomatoes. And those are the indeterminate tomatoes, which means that they can keep on growing and be attached to the wall. So picking them is easier for us. It's easier on our back. It's easier for them to grow there. And they've put j just the pretty marigolds around it. And the funniest thing was I was walking by one day and the homeowner was out watering. And she, I said to her, well, that's a certainly a nice impress uh, presentation other than that big old poplar. And she said, I really, really like it. And I wasn't sure that I would. But now I'm buying a table and little chair or a little table and some chairs and I'm going to sit out here and have my morning coffee. And I just thought that was great. And the little shrubs they've planted in the front, they've planted flowering um, shrubs. But when I said they were just flowering, she says, oh, no, those are Saskatoons. But I hadn't gone up close to look. And now it's five, six years old now. And you should see that little hedge. It's just full of fruit and the flowers just amaze me. So it's all, like I keep saying to you, it's all in the thought process of how you can do it and what you can manage. And let's talk a bit more about watering. Like I say, Marigold has my big old watering can and she likes to play with it because it has water usually, but it's heavy. It's really heavy. Whereas I like these Phillips watering cans with the double handle I find it easier to manage them and it yes it only holds about three liters of water but when I'm going around and watering small planters all over my deck it will usually water most of them and I just have to refill a second time and I do like it too because I will leave it sitting on the counter all spring and I will fill it from my kettle water if I have leftover kettle water I will pour excess water from uh, cooking my vegetables because it's it just fills it up and I'm not wasting my water, which is part and parcel of my big thing lately. And then sometimes it's hard, you know, just to plan what you're going to put, you know, for watering. Soaker hoses, easy way to water without having to haul water. I like soaker hoses from the standpoint of they just ooze the water slowly. So they're not consuming a lot of water and they do put, you just put it in permanently into your, into your bed and you have a connector. I like the Gardena connectors. My hose has a Gardena connector on one end and another at the other, and it just clicks together. I turn the water on. I leave it on for 15 minutes maybe and it trickles out the water beautifully and the little tomatoes get well watered. And as they grow older, I've left the soaker hose in and the hose stays under in the shade. That way the water doesn't evaporate quickly and you can get quite a bit of, of moisture in it. And when you look at the fact that about an inch of rain weighs about 5.2 pounds per square foot of soil. So if you have a four by four square foot bed and it doesn't rain for a week, you'll need to deliver about 22 pounds of water. However, with the soaker hose, it goes lower, it goes slower and it won't evaporate as quickly. So it'll be just as easy to grow to water with that. Drip irrigation. Well, there's all sorts of drip irrigation out. This petunia and mixed planting has drip irrigation in it. And you can go to most of the big box stores and they sell drip irrigation kits. I'm still really, really struck by the drip irrigation that Lee Valley Tools sells. And it is really efficient. Rainbird is just as efficient. But I think, and I do have to admit this, I find Lee Valley a little bit less expensive and you can get several hookups for it. But I like the drip irrigation from these kits and from Lee Valley because it goes very slowly into the pot. You're not running around trying to haul a great big rain 
watering can over your head to water the hanging plants. You're not having to go down low to water some of the lower ones. And if you can get them situated in such a way that they're part and parcel of near where the hose bib is, it makes a big difference. Now, just some of the maintenance that one of the reasons that I talk to people about tables and having things raised up is the joy of deadheading. Now, it's one of those chores in the garden that we we do, and we clean up the plants, and we deadhead petunias, and we will prune and or pinch out in the uh, taggedies. Be great. I have a little pair of hand snips, and I'll go around and do my dianthus and my geraniums and deadhead them. And it makes a big difference to the consumption of time that you spend in the garden. But it's important because we've made an investment. We're putting the flowers in. We're putting the vegetables in. We should be picking and using and picking to get them to not go to seed. And I'm going to, because this really isn't about gardening, but I'm going to say deadheading a petunia is not pulling the flower out of the state, out of the calyx. You've got to get that out too, because otherwise you're leaving the seed to develop and it'll just stop flowering. So pull, pull the whole thing, pinch it right out. And hire better help than I have for deadheading. This just, this just, I, I looked over and I have to admit, this is a client's yard, not my yard. And my old dog Muse thought that Every pot was meant to be slept in if it had a big enough surface. Plus, she saw me picking flowers, so I think that's what she was doing. Anyway, so that's just some of the things that as we try to get our gardens going, a little bit of judicious pin pinching and pruning and, and the way we water and how we raise the beds up so we can access them. And I don't know about you, but this morning I put that on the porch. I really do miss my garden. I thought we were getting close, but we need the snow more. So I just want to say, I'm hoping we're going to get pretty soon, but it's still a little, just a tinge early. So hopefully I have convinced you that there are all sorts of ways to make gardening for seniors accessible, no matter what the, or no matter what your age and ability level. But just in case you need a little ability level and more encouragement, think about this. Gardening can make you live longer, maybe even to a hundred years of age. I had a great aunt who did, um, and may reduce your risk of dementia by 36%. So honestly, I think that gardening is a wonderful therapy, and that's not just because I've been a horticulturist for all of my career. I just think things are so much better that way. And my grandfather was a longtime gardener, and he lived to be 86, and he gardened in that big backyard right until he was 86. So I'm hoping for all of you that we get some real joy still out of our garden, and I want to thank you all. And this project is, thank you, it is part and parcel of through and sponsored by the Government of Canada. So I think we could do a little more than that. So if you, do we have time for questions, Deb? Am I still? Yeah, you have, we have about um, not quite 10 minutes to, okay. to take questions. And I have a couple, I just wanted to share, Ellen had put a comment in the chat and she was saying that she often lifts items onto her four-wheel walker to move them. Fortunately, she can still lift most items. So that's um, definitely helpful for those who use that device. The so one question coming up here, Kath, and it's kind of a, bit, a little bit of mine. We were talking, introducing this as safety in the garden. Yes. So one of the things I always find a bit of a challenge is that first time in the garden overdoing it because you're so yes. excited to be outside. So what kinds of things do you do? A warm up? I've got a little, I don't know if you folks can, let's see. This is oh, a yes. little stress acorn, which is yes. kind of nice to get, because when you're weeding or you're digging, I always find it's good to get the hands warmed up before taking on some of those garden 
chores? Are there is there any stretching or anything you do before you head out to the garden, especially at the beginning of the season? Well, I definitely stretch. And that workbench that I have put on my deck, I can lift it my knee up and stretch with it. And I use it that way. Now that I'm getting more mobility, I will be able to use it again and it will be really quite handy but I do a little bit of the you know the stretching sideways and things because sometimes when I forget to do that and I go out in the garden and I'm reaching and I start getting all enthusiastic I'll reach too far or I'll reach to the left without turning my body so I try to do a bit of stretching and getting my muscles ready to go out in the garden the other thing don't forget a hat I don't or even in early spring we need a hat on and and a nice, not a heavy wide brim necessarily. I have probably one of the ugliest hats in the neighborhood. And it, it looks like it, well, it used to have a fold up brim. Now it's totally pulled down because I keep trying to keep the sun off my ears. So I always wear a hat as, as part and parcel of what I'm doing. And gardening gloves, you can't, you can't not use garden gloves as far as I'm concerned. But for the exercises, even the simple act of going out into the garage to get my tools off the wall, I find by reaching up and doing that and bringing it down. And the, a physio recently told me to stretch, use your hand and stretch it out and use the tool in it just to give it a bit of re resistance. And those are very important. And the other thing that I've should have put into this and I but I thought I'd show and tell it hand tools that have a bit of grip to them are much easier to manage than these solid slidey metal things they're a little tricky I grant you that this thing has a place for my thumb but it doesn't give me enough traction whereas I I think that the rubber handle easy to manage trowels are really valuable. And especially since I'm working close into what I'm working with. And don't ever let go of it while you're in mid dig because it really hurts when it hits your head. So just, just. Yeah. Another safety tip. <laughs> Another safety tip. And if you were to ask Glenn, he says for sure wear your garden gloves because he gave himself a black eye by letting go of a tool. So. <laughs> he didn't what put if, his gloves yeah. on <laughs> so Kathy you talked a bit about the the kneeling stool what yes. about knee pads do you have a do you use knee pads what kind do you use or do you use a cushion I well? used to use knee pads and I have um, used them over the years I don't particularly like the ones with that are all elastic and have the pad on the front they're, because they are about this wide at the back. And when you're bending, it's really hard on your knee, the flex of your knee, the wider elastic. But there are some really good um, knee pads that have a strip that goes through them. And it's just a self-fastening Velcro strap. It's about this big. And they are really, really good. And I particularly like them in when I work in gravel pathways or when I work along the edge that have been lined with rock, I will use them there. I I can't right now, but I will go back to my knee pads. So I will look for those. And the ones at Lee Valley Tools are ideal because they just go on so neatly. How about folks in our audience? What kind of tips do you have that you share? Do you do a warm up before you go in the garden? You can unmute and uh, just chat with us. There's just a few of us today, so don't have to worry about a bunch of people trying to talk at the same time. So you can put your hand up um, using the little reaction icon at the bottom, and we can call on you. Ellen, do you have any other tips? So path for carrying. What yes. do you do for carrying? Do you use your wagon? So okay, I'll tell I've got one for you. All right. So my your wagon, that Costco wagon that you like so well. My mother was complaining she can't she has to be careful about lifting. She's been told she can't um she has to uh, not carry heavy things very far. So she had a wheelbarrow, but of course you have to lift a wheelbarrow 
she wasn't happy about that. And you have to kind of push and she felt she could drag things better. So I got her last summer, one of those Costco wagons and she uses it for everything. She puts soil in a bucket because she was filling some raised beds, used her wagon, can pull her wagon. She doesn't have to push. When she went, she <laughs> She just, she's starting seeds. It's that time of year. She, when she went to the local hardware store, they put the bale of soil in her car or truck. And then she was able to tumble it off into her wagon. <laughs> so she's been using her wagon everywhere she goes to do they everything. They are amazing. The best they, thing. And there's a new wagon out in the collapsing variety that has actually got a fold out top to it that comes across and you can use it like a table oh, and the fine. wheels the wheels are a bit higher now those I saw at um, Rona and they just intrigued me no end so I but oh, I have a wagon so I might one. slide a I might slide a board over top or something but my wagon is one of the things that I do with it is I carry it in my car and it's one of the things I can lift with it out it packed. And if I go, say, for instance, I'll go over and get my potting soil pretty soon. And the guys put it in the back of the car. And then what I do is I slide the wagon down and put it, open it. And I can usually fit three of the bigger bags of potting mix in. And I just slide them directly into the wagon. And I can push and pull that around the side of my house. And then I've opened the bag wide and I just start feeling buckets as I need them. So I do like that. I honestly, I have a walker these days too. And I have one of those baskets that you put stuff in. So I I put it, everything in it and I haul things around with it. And I like it a lot in the garage. It's been very handy. The only thing is that about a week ago, I put the basket in the garage somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm going to have to go in the garage and have a search and rescue mis mission. But I also, my friend who has the golf cart and gardens from the golf cart, she has this method. She gets the guys, well, wherever she shops, she gets them to put the big bags of soil on the floor in front of her front seat. And she has a pair of scissors with herself. And what she'll do is cut them open and she's taken her wagon over beside the door and she just fills the bags, empties the bags as, as she goes. Her son doesn't like it much because he can't ride in the front seat. So it's always a battle, but she does that. She unloads that and she also bought a wagon like mine so she can haul stuff, but she's got a cart that attaches to her golf cor cart now. So she's got She's got, you should see where the clubs go in the golf cart is all tools now. And then she's got a little wagon on the back and she puts things in there. So it's quite, it's quite an interesting setup, but we all have favorite ways to carry things and, and move things. And as we age, it's harder and harder to do so much lifting. And I find it anyway, by the end of the okay. first week of garden season, I have to get out the hot water bottle. <laughs> Janet has a, a question. What bags of soil do you recommend? Bag soil? Mm -hmm. Well, I I like the pro mix vegetable and herb soil better than the old um, the big bag of vegetable mix. But I've also been using a product from um It'll come to me in the middle of the night. But I've been using one that I buy at Rona. And it doesn't have the Rona name on it. It's Grow, 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 um, Jiffy Grow, Jiffy Grow. That's the name of it. And at, and I've been buying it at Rona and at Home Depot. But the price at Home Depot is cheaper just, just because. But I like that Jiffy Pro. And it has a nice consistency to it it when you wet it one of the things I do with potting mix is I test them to see how much how much mud they make and if they make too much mud and also I don't want it if it's got too much peat moss in it because I think we should all be moving away from peat and trying to get 
our own, own organic mix going. Okay, any last questions? We're at 304 now, anyone wanna pop in? We gotta thank you from Ellen. I learned so much every presentation. Thank you very much. Any <laughs> other you. last comments or do you have a wrap up line? Do I have a wrap up line? Well, from sitting here and hearing that everybody's hardly asking any questions, I'm thinking maybe that I gave lots of answers and I'm hoping, but mull them over. Maybe if you want to email us a couple of questions from what you're thinking about. And we're recording this, right, Deb? Yes, we are. Yeah, so they can they can look again, and maybe that'll give them a couple of more questions to look at. And it will go on our, our YouTube channel, and you'll see it in the uh, e-news when it's ready. So hopefully we'll get it up. We try to get it up within a week, and uh, hopefully a little sooner. So Marg's got a comment here. I have a big bag of peat soil. What can I use it for? The peat soil? Mm -hmm. Mix it with some regular soil and use it in your flower beds. Don't put it in your vegetable garden. The drainage away from the drainage away from your vegetables will be too much. So it'll be really hard on that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kath. And we'll thank wrap you. up now. You just saw an M pop in. Just to uh, let you know, once again, we have recorded the presentation and we'll do a little bit of editing and then we'll have it up on the YouTube channel and tell people about it in the e-news. So thanks, Kath. Happy gardening, thank you. everyone. May thank you, you have a safe, fun spring. Yeah, and prepare yourself. I might come up with 10 more safety tips after I fall over in the garden again. Thank you.